Hi, and welcome to another video by plcgurus.net. Um, this is our YouTube channel. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, please do subscribe to our channel. Um, and also, if you find this video useful, please go ahead and click the like button below. Um, and I do want to invite all of you to my, or well, sorry, not my, but our blog site at www.plcguru.net. Um, I'll include a link up in the video here so you can get right over there and please become a, an active member of our community and it's a great place to share problems, solutions um, and any kind of challenges you're facing out there now. So please, please do that. Um, okay, so in this video what we intend to do is we want to go ahead and configure RS links to communicate to a controller uh, over Ethernet. So you're going to find that we have a couple of options in which to do that. Um, and this video also assumes that the controller or bridge module that you're trying to connect to is already configured with an IP address from a machine builder or what have you. It's already come in and it's already got an IP address uh, configured. Um, I'll probably do another video that, you know, right from unboxing, how do we initially configure an IP address on an Ethernet bridge module. But like I say, that'll be another video. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to head over to your control panel and to your network and sharing center and change adapter settings. So you can see here I have two uh, network interface cards in this computer or this VM. Um, for me, local area connection 2 is the interface that's connected to the network that my controller is on. So what we have to do here is we want to double click this and we want to go down to properties and we want to select internet protocol version 4 and click properties again okay so you can see here I already have a static IP address configured on the same network that my PLC currently resides so my PLC my PLC's Ethernet bridge modules IP is 192.168.1.10 and you can see here I've set my computer to dot 200 so it's important that you give your computer a unique IP address. Every IP address on a network has to be unique. Okay, and then you see there's a subnet mask here. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of what that does and how it works, but sufficient to say, if you have this uh, obtain an IP address automatically, you'll select this and enter uh, an IP address and, and subnet mask similar to what I have here. Okay, so let's assume that that's all good to go. We'll click OK and close and close, and we can get right out of here. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and configure your RS Links communication driver. So we'll launch RS Links Classic, and again, this is a free uh, download from the Rockwell Automation uh, website. Um, and you want to go up here to Communications, Configure Drivers. Okay, so you can see I only have a, an ABDF1 driver. This is set up from a previous video. Um, if you need to connect via USB to uh, serial, I encourage you to check out that video. And again, I'll put a link to that video on this, this channel as well. Um, but for the, for the purpose of this video, let's go ahead to the available driver types. And you can see here I have two options. I have an Ethernet devices driver and an Ethernet IP driver. So there are some differences to these two drivers. One, um, if you're connecting to a legacy type controller, for instance, a slick or PLC5, um, you will need to use the Ethernet devices driver. Those older legacy type controllers will not support the Ethernet IP driver. Um, well, they may, but they may be a little flaky, so I always recommend these ones. Um, but anything newer, um, any new control logics um, controllers will definitely utilize the Ethernet IP driver. So I think we'll do both just so you can see the differences. So let's go ahead and, and configure the Ethernet devices driver first. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add New. And again, we can give this a unique name. I do recommend that you do this if you're in a facility that has um, a lot of PLCs, a lot of work cells, et cetera. So you can kind of start to modularize controllers under a certain area, under a certain description. But for now, we'll keep that at the default. So we're going to click OK. And with this either devices driver, we need to statically type in the IP address of the controller or controllers to which we want to connect to. So like I said, my controller is currently communicating over the 192.168.1.10. 
um, via its Ethernet bridge module. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add New, click Apply, and click OK. And you can see it's immediately showed up in our driver list here. So I want to go ahead and highlight this driver. And you can see now with my auto browse selected, it's now doing this windowing. So that means it's browsing that driver. So I'm going to go ahead and drill down into that. And you can see that my Ethernet bridge module is communi currently communicating. So we want to get to that CPU. So I'm going to drill down again because remember, we're going from my computer. And the first thing we're hitting on that network is the Ethernet bridge module. So we can drill down. Now we can drill through the black plane and see everything that's connected there. And you can see that my 1756L61 processor currently resides in slot zero, and my Ethernet bridge here is in slot one. Okay, so that all looks good. We're working there. So let's go over and try that other driver, just so you can see the difference between the two. So remember that with this one, we had to statically type in the IP address or addresses of the devices to which we wanted to connect to. With the, with the Ethernet IP driver, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead back to the available driver types. I'm going to go ahead and select this Ethernet IP driver. I'm going to select Add New. And again, I'm going to leave the default name here. You can change it. And now I'm confronted with some options here. So what the Ethernet IP driver does is it uses your network interface card or cards. In this case, I have two, remember, um, to go out and browse every device that's connected on that interface. So you can see here, it's showing both of my network interfaces. And I have one configured for the 192.168.10 network. And I have one configured for the 192.168.1 network. So which one do you think I want to choose here? Of course, I want to choose this one because that's the network interface that's community or connected to the same network as my ethernet bridge over here. So let's click apply, click okay. And notice, I don't have to type in the IP address of this device. I just start browsing this driver, drill down, and it goes out and finds it for me. And there we have it. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, and again, if you like this video and you found it useful, please click the like button. And I do encourage you again to go over to our blog site and you know, become an active mu uh, member of uh, that community as well. And please click the subscribe to channel button if you'd like to see more videos. I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos that help with uh, some certain things that people have been struggling with. So stay tuned. Thank you so much and have a great day.